Morning, this is Doc of Dr. Patrick Live, and I thought I would share some things with you this morning. One of the conundrums in my life is that through all the experiences of trauma, all the things that happened to me, being involved in human sex trafficking, being molested, being whipped, being beat, being neglected, you know, the whole list of trauma, having a dad go to prison, having him escape, living on the run, you know, da 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 lots of stuff happened. In the midst of that, I was trying to find my identity. I was trying to find a way that I could be accepted, that somehow there would be value and worth in what I did or in me. I mistakenly attached that to what I did. So I quickly learned that if I was to tell people anything about me, they couldn't handle it. It would lower my value. But if I could build this white knight scene, and I was the knight in shining armor on this white steed of perfection, maybe a black suit of armor where you really couldn't tell, but I was the hero. And everywhere I went, I rescued, I restored, I renewed people. I was this person that could reach out and save the world. And so I fit that persona and I started working on it, working on it, working on it. When I went to college, no one knew my past. And everyone thought, oh, you must be a pastor's kid. You're so good. People would comment about, wish they wish they had a life like mine. Because I would never talk about the filth, the shame, the guilt, the things that happened to me. Even the things I did. Like those were put on a shelf. Like we're not dealing with that. I hid everything about me. And just developed this shining night persona. But inside it brewed, inside it built. I wore the white dress socks with the burgundy dress shoes, had a nice suit, beautiful ties, suspenders. I mean, I was happening. But I was decaying inside. The more I worked on this polished outside, the more my inside just started falling apart and big chunks started to collapse. It was like a brewing lava within me and I was being sucked down to this quicksand and doing everything I could to stay up. I wanted to be the perfect father, the perfect husband, the perfect pastor, the perfect person, the perfect friend. And so I was building all this incredible facade and then telling everybody, oh yeah, you must be authentic and work through your stuff. But no one, no one knew what was really happening. I tried going to therapy three times. Each time I would start to tell the therapist the story of my life, they would cry, they'd become overwhelmed, and inevitably they'd start telling me about theirs. And I quickly learned people cannot handle my experiences. I simply should not tell them. People want me to be on the white horse. They want me to be this knight, this persona, this image of everything good. And so I quickly learned there is no help for people like me. So my shame, my guilt, those feelings, I had to fight, fight, fight. It reached the point where the inside of me had so much pressure that I didn't want to live anymore. It's not like I wanted to kill myself, but I didn't want to live. So I got a do not resuscitate bracelet, put it on my wrist. And I thought, man, the best thing that could happen is that something happened to me and I don't get resuscitated and that's it. I just didn't have the will, the strength to keep on going. That image of being on the white horse, of being this knight in shining armor, was killing me. It was crushing me. And there was no way out. If you have decided that the best thing for you is to hide from you, is to not, not to be true, not to be authentic, not to be the real you, it doesn't work. You have to dig in it and work through the shame, the guilt, the experiences. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He heals them, but you have to kind of give them to him. For all too often, I knew I had the wounds. I built a shell around them and told myself, okay, they don't exist. Even today, when I'm sitting here thinking I should do this little video, I, thought I should put a shirt on because people will say he's fat, he's this, he's that, he's whatever. I mean, I work out five hours a week, but you know, it's never enough. 
shame. Hard to accept ourselves. When I go to the beach, I want to wear a shirt. I don't want to, you know, show my stomach. Not because there's something wrong with my stomach, so to speak. It's because people are going to judge me. But really, the one who judged me is me. I have the dialogue. Oh, you're like this, or you're like that, or... And it just eats me alive. And so I hide myself even from me. It finally reached a point where I had to say to myself, it's not worth it. I can't keep doing it. I have to step out, step off of the horse, take off the suit of armor. And people have to see me as I really am. They have to see the scars. They have to see the wounds. They have to see the healing. And they have to see the damage. I decided I was never going to hide it again, but some people couldn't handle it and it radically changed my life because I didn't want lies, I just wanted to be me. I used to have shirts that I wore because on my arms are these tattoos and I didn't want people to see them because I didn't want them to judge me. So I'd wear long, long sleeves. I thought, you know what, I have to be me, so I started rolling up my sleeves. Every once in a while, someone would say something about my tattoo, but most didn't. What I realized is, I am constantly criticizing and judging and promoting shame in here. And because of that, it limits what I do. But most people appreciate the authenticity. When I go and I speak, like we just spoke at the DCF conference, and we talk about wounds and the neurobiology of trauma and what happens and what it's really like to live with it. We are very authentic, my wife and I. And people come up inevitably and say, thank you so much. I never told anybody. And they start to process with us. There's freedom that comes with processing, if it's appropriate. So no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, if you have put yourself on that white horse or others, remember, they want probably to keep you up there because they don't know how to handle it any other way. But just because they want it doesn't mean you should do it. There are times you need to step down and be who you really are. Lead with authenticity, with honesty and truth. Yeah, it sets you on a different journey because you have to process stuff you don't want to. And the basement of our lives is like a horror movie with chainsaws and spider webs. Yeah, you got to get in there. You got to start working. It helps to have a good therapist. It helps to be able to process good faith or something to really ground you. But it is possible. Freedom comes. God says the truth sets us free. And it's a process of freedom. Because even though we have it, we have to become free from the negativity, this inner critic inside. So listen, never give up. You can keep it up. Keep going. There's hope on the other side. Peace out, Doc.